Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm taking a look at DJI's newest quadcopter, the Mavic Pro. You may have seen some rumors of this quad on the internet, and it's true, it's a real thing, it exists. Uh, it doesn't look like your typical drone, and that's because it's DJI's first foldable quad. The struts all collapse into something, a package that you can throw in your backpack and about half the weight of the Phantom 4. So what I'm gonna do is actually show you how it works the struts pop out like this, and even the props are folded, and the legs pop off, it's almost like turkey legs. Transforms out, the battery sits on top, I'm gonna power it up, and I don't even have to unfold the props, I can just put it down. You can see in the front, there's a three axis gimbal with a camera, and when I put it on the ground, I'm gonna grab the transmitter, and I have now uh, a new transmitter, um, which they've designed not only to fit the phone on the bottom, which is different, but also has its own display. You can run this without connecting it to a smartphone at all. All right, and so I have it on the ground here, have the transmitter, and I can take it off. There it goes. Now, it's looking rock steady because it actually has the same sensors that you'd find in DJI's other quadcopters. You have GPS, you got GLONASS, and there are sensors on the bottom just like they introduced with the Inspire 1. So I go underneath, there's actually an optical sensor and also your sonar to know how far it is above the ground. Uh, you have the three axis camera there. DJI says it's the same sensor as you would find on the Phantom 4. The lens system is obviously a little smaller, so the field of view is a little narrower. And it also inherits a few features from the Phantom 4, such as front-facing cameras that give it obstacle avoidance. So it flies toward me, it won't crash into me, and also the sport mode that lets it fly much faster than your typical drone. I can't wait to test this out, so I'm gonna grab the controller, go for a test flight, and then chat with DJI and learn more about it. So Adam, this is the Mavic Pro. Uh, it looks nothing like uh, the quads you guys have been making for uh, because it's, it's collapsible. Is that, is that the whole idea behind it, the, the idea of making something portable? So think of this in, not in form factor, but in features, a small Phantom 4. It has the same five vision positioning sensors. It has the same obstacle avoidance. Uh, it actually has some benefits over the Phantom 4 and I'm not talking about form factor either. Uh, I'm talking about um, what it's using on board to give you your video downlink and transmission. Mm. It's using something called OcuSync that works out to seven kilometers. This is on 4.3 miles in America. Um, this is not to say you should fly out that far, but it gives you a sense of how small that latency is gonna be, like eight milliseconds. And it, it also uh, is a, a software solution, not a hardware solution, versus Lightbridge 2 in the Phantom 4. Right, so Lightbridge was the, the base station and built into the Phantom 4, the video transmission system you guys have had for a long time. It gave you HD video, relatively low latency, not exactly for FPV flying, uh, but you're saying that what's in the Mavic Pro is even better than that. So effectively, the range is longer than the Phantom 4? That, that's right, so Lightbridge 2 is extremely capable. Um, but we felt that the best solution here would be that software solution with OcuSync. Uh, and the result of that is that you, you do have uh, more potential distance, but, but you have uh, it's a stronger video transmission signal. Um, now, how about the, the motors then? Because they, they look like smaller motors, and one of the advantages I liked in the Phantom 4 is that it was rock solid. It felt like almost flying like a tiny Inspire, way more solid, more resistant to wind. Now we don't have a ton of wind today, you can see the flags there. How does this fly compared to the Phantom 4 in the same wind conditions? 
So first of all, I mean, because it has the same VPS and because it has the same sensors, uh, it is pretty rock solid by itself. Now it is a smaller drone and we're out here on Treasure Island, so there's a lot of wind. You will notice um, that, that it's smaller and lighter because of that when you're flying it. Uh, motors are miniaturized, however, the speed, you're not really giving up that much. You're getting a maximum of 18 meters per second, so about 40 miles an hour versus 20, for, 20 meters per second for the Phantom 4. So despite it being uh, about half the weight of the Phantom 4, it's still able to, to punch above its weight in terms of speed. And that's in sport mode, so there's both normal mode and that, sport mode? That, that's right. It'll fly at around 10 meters per second in, in the normal mode. Mm. Now, these are often bought as camera systems. Like, I like flying drones and quadcopters to shoot video, take photos. Can you talk about the camera system and the gimbal system on the Mavic Pro? Yeah, it's very deceptive. So the camera looks a lot smaller, but you have the same one and two thirds um, sensor in this camera. Uh, it's still a 4K camera, and the results that we're getting so far are, are quite good. Uh, it, it shows up as a 4K camera, and, and I would say you're really not sacrificing quality for size here. Mm, so it's still a three-axis gimbal. It looks like that's miniaturized. Maybe you're using the same sensor. The lens system is different. Um, is it wider, narrower? Are you going to get more or less than getting? How does that compare? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of natural when you have a, a smaller lens like that, that what you're going to get uh, is 78.8 degree field of view versus 94 for the Phantom 4. Uh, again, though, it's it's when you put it up in the air and you want to take a really good shot, you're really not going to notice that difference. Now, with the controller, um, you also told me there was some force feedback features. How does that tie into the, the flying and the functionality? Yeah, it's pretty cool. If you're out flying and you're kind of observing your craft flying and you suddenly feel a little tactile feedback, a little buzz in your, your, your hand here, that is a, a prompt for you to look down at the screen and see what's going on. For example, when we were flying earlier, it did that uh, to advise us that the winds were pretty high and that we should plot our course with some caution. It's just a little added safety measure and it, it kind of reminds you, look up, but also look down for a second too. And it, it just keeps you up to date on what's happening with the craft. But that's not a one-to-one -one feedback, it's a vibration alert mechanism. So it's for the, the uh, avoidance, obstacle avoidance, or for like you said, when it's detecting high winds, but you're not gonna that's feel, right. for example, wind pushing in one direction no or the other. no no it's not it's not like a video game but it. uh it, it's just an extra little bit of safety mm. now with the transfer that's small but i also noticed that the place where you put the sd card in you can also switch to a wi-fi mode yes so you can actually put the controller away which i'll do right now um, after you uh switch over on mm -hmm. that toggle switch yep. to wi-fi so we're not talking about seven kilometers anymore we're talking about 80 meters uh this is uh, a mode that lets you fly with Wi-Fi at short distance, within close range. Uh, it's that kind of convenient thing if you're on a bike ride or a hike and you want to put the, the Mavic in the air and take a group selfie or something like that. Uh, it's just very convenient. You don't have to worry about setting up the controller and plugging things in. You just turn on the craft, uh, put it up in the air, use your app, and it has virtual sticks on the, on the screen and you can control your shutter and take your video that way as well. And that's it, you don't need the controller. Now, the other thing I also noticed is that there aren't any landing struts on this thing, um, like with the Phantom line. Right. And I know a lot of people like flying these uh, and even grabbing them out of the sky. It makes it a little more versatile. If you're on a mountaintop, you have uneven terrain. Uh, you can't grab this out of the sky. I'm not advising a hand catch with this. I would say uh, proceed with caution as you would with anything, but yeah, I land this one on the ground and we also have some some features built in there uh, to make sure that you land it safely on the ground. Yeah, so when it gets low enough, you actually have to hard press the, the stick to actually land it That's right. or double tap on the screen. Um, when it gets to the ground, it, it's flush to the ground. We know that people don't fly in even surfaces all the time. It can be rocky, it can be even grassy like we're standing on right now. Uh, how are you protecting the electronics and the, the camera system? So there's a couple things. So. Um, we have the legs in the front, as you can see, and that's giving you a little bit of tilt, so you're, you're never going to land on that camera or the gimbal. Um, you know, we don't want you to bounce it too hard, which is why we built in the safety feature. Um, but essentially, uh, there's also a bubble that you can put over this, uh, a plastic bubble, clear plastic bubble, that will uh, give you some added protection. Mm. And then finally, uh, battery life. Uh, what's the battery life like on the Mavic Pro so, and how long does it take to charge? Uh, under ideal conditions, 
uh, you'll get about 27 minutes on this. Uh, and you'll be able to charge it in somewhat under an hour. In 27 minutes, that's assuming with uh, obstacle avoidance turned off, flying normal mode, not hitting high winds. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of situation where I would say that actual performance depends on what you're doing with the craft with the full charge on the battery. All right, Adam, well, I look forward to testing this and taking this out in the field. Thanks for sharing with us. I hope you have some us. fun there. Thanks. Yeah. So you know the saying, the best camera is the one that you have with you at all times. That's why smartphones have become the most popular cameras. And maybe that also applies to quadcopters and drones as well. It's no surprise then that GoPro and DJI both recently have announced foldable quadcopters. On the GoPro side with the GoPro Karma, they have a unique feature of being able to detach that three axis stabilizing gimbal and the camera so you can use it as just a handheld camera. And then on the DJI Mavic side, you have of course the advantage of their proven history of their sensors, the GPS sensors and the front camera sensors, as well as the app and their speed controllers. Now, in my brief flight time with the DJI Mavic, I found it to be a lot of fun to fly. It was really, really Really responsive, especially in sport mode. And maybe the smaller size actually helps that. Something I did notice though is that because they are smaller motors, smaller props, it didn't feel as sturdy in the sky as when as an Inspire 1 or even a Phantom 4 or Phantom 3 even. When we took it up to about 250 feet up in the sky above Treasure Island, we got that transmitter warning, the vibration on the transmitter, as well as an on-screen notification that the winds up there may be a little tough for this quad and you gotta fly a little more carefully. So even though it does have that new video transmission system that theoretically lets it go up to seven kilometers away from us, it's also about altitude. And if this quad can't handle high altitude flying, then that's gonna be a big disadvantage more flight testing, of course, is needed. The things that I'm gonna be most interested in testing though with this quad, of course, battery life. They're claiming about 27 minutes of battery life, but we know that that's gonna be dependent on whether you're flying in normal mode or full power sport mode and whether you have things like the uh, obstacle avoidance system enabled or disabled. There's also, of course, that new video transmission system that's replacing Lightbridge. DJI is saying that's lower latency and increased range that's something to be tested. And of course, whether a transmitter that has on-screen display is gonna be useful without needing to plug the phone in. Is that gonna be fun to use if you can't look at the phone and see what the quad is seeing? Or even if you just use the phone and connect it over Wi-Fi with the limited range and limited speed, if that's gonna be useful at all. All things to be tested. Now DJ also talked about a few features that we didn't get a chance to test or even check out and that's improved computer vision. Something I wasn't too excited about with the Phantom 4, it didn't work so well for me, but it's supposedly improved in the Mavic. Through the app, you have active tracking, you have a new gesture mode, so they call it a selfie mode. You can wave at the quad and have it take a picture of you or have you centered in frame. And there's also a terrain tracking mode that lets it go up a hill, a 30 degree incline hill and not crash into the side of the hill. That could be useful as well, as well as built-in FPV support. That's something I'm really excited about, but no word on what goggles are gonna be supported or whether DJI is gonna be making their own low latency digital goggles for this quad. A lot of things to test, a lot of questions in the air. So when we get the quad and we'll be doing all of that on the site, you can stay tuned for our full test in the future. But until then, we'll see you next time.